Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about uh, the Magnus effect and the famous video that you probably have seen on YouTube, which is a person releasing a basketball from the top of a dam. And instead of going straight down, which we expect in the free fall, all the person does, it, he gives it an initial spin counterclockwise. And as he releases the ball, instead of going straight down, it goes curved like this and moves forward and lands in a relatively far away distance from right below the object. So it travels a lot of distance in the X direction. And this is a very interesting video. Let me uh, show you that. So that's one of my favorite videos as well. So here, uh, as you can see, he first releases the ball with no spin and it directly goes down. And basically, uh, you might say, well, it seems like it didn't. It did actually, but um, the way that the video is taken, you might think that it did not go straight down. Okay, it is going straight down, but there is a little bit, uh, uh, I would say, bad uh, movie taking. Now look, here he spins it and sends it down. And look what happens. So instead of going straight down, look, it moves way, way, way forward and lands in the lake. You see? And uh, this is about the Magnus effect, which is the lift force. So here I want to explain the equations for it and show you a MATLAB simulation of that so you see what is going on. So the Magnus effect is because of when a ball is spinning in the air, it generates a lift force. So now when the ball is going down, not only there is drag force on the object, there is also what lift force in addition, of course, to what the gravity. So if you draw the free body diagram of the object in addition to um, the gravity force, as I said, that you have, which is uh, basically uh, like this downward. OK, so you have this gravity force Mg. Also, uh, if the ball is uh, moving in this direction, this is like the velocity of it at any general moment, then you also will have the drag force opposite to the direction of motion. And if the ball is spinning like this counterclockwise, then the Magnus force is basically given by a term similar to the drag because you remember the drag force if you remember, the drag force is what? You have it down here. It is one half drag coefficient A V squared. And A is the cross section of the object and V squared is the magnitude of the speed. And if you can look at the lift force or the Magnus force, this is similar. One half the lift coefficient times density of the air times cross section times V squared. And the direction of that is determined by what? by the direction of omega and uh, v and v here this v hat is the unit vector of v so if omega here is out of the board because it's counterclockwise so the axis of omega is out of the board like this and this is v the resulting force is going to be in the direction of omega cross v so use your right hand uh, fingers put your uh, right hand fingers in the direction of out of the board and bend it such that it goes in the direction of V, then you can see that your Magnus force or lift force in this case, it is going to be perpendicular to both Omega and V in this direction. Okay, so you're going to have these three forces. And as you can see, this Magnus force is going to have two components. One of them is this, the other one is that. And this vertical one is going to cancel this mg to some extent. So it makes the total time for the fall of the object a little bit longer because you are not doing just pure free fall. Some force is trying to cancel your weight. So you expect longer uh, fall in terms of time. And then this horizontal component of the force is going to overcome the drag and the total x force is going to be forward that what makes this object instead of going straight down 
to be curved a little bit forward like that and you get this extra x distance that's where it falls in the lake instead of on the dam okay and uh here um as i said these are the equations so total uh, forces is equal to mass times acceleration this is all of the forces acting on the object and if you write your um uh, v and omega in terms of vectors you can see if you just assume the whole motion is happening in the xy plane it's a 2d motion there is no lateral motion and omega can always stay about the z-axis then this omega here can basically be just omega in the z direction right so you can call it omega k in terms of the uh, unit vectors and this v is going to be vx over v right because it's a unit vector in the i direction plus what plus vy over v in the j direction correct and if you carry the cross product well k cross i becomes a j so you should get positive omega vx over v in the j direction which is this term here look this is omega vx vx is dx over d t with positive sign and then k cross j becomes negative i so you should get negative omega vy over v and that is what you can see here that is omega this is vy and you might say what happened to this over v well this over v and this v squared would cancel and you get a single linear term okay or in terms of magnitude basically you're gonna just get uh this term what times v like that okay so this term has to be something like that okay and then here as well this guy has to be v because you're simplifying so your equations will be something like this okay v times dx over dt so here dx over dt is a v component in general you should have some v squared component in the equation and this is what you can see over here so these are your governing equations and let me show you my matlab simulation here so here is the matlab simulation these parameters are relatively realistic for a basketball the mass the radius the height of the dam 100 meters you release it from rest at an initial height with zero velocity for you let it go for 50 seconds and you solve the ODE now the ODE is what here you have four parameters because you have to convert two second order ODEs which are these two look these are second order ODEs two of them so the state vector that you pick should be x and y and then x dot and y dot or vx and vy okay so this is going to be your what this is going to be your uh, state vector and uh, so uh, when you use this state vector and those two ODEs second order you're going to get four first order ODEs which are exactly uh, these guys that you can see so the derivative of these parameters are going to be basically uh, x is going to be vx y is going to be vy derivative of vx is going to be ax derivative of vy is going to be a y and if you look at this ax and a y they are coming from these equations because that's ax and this is what a y over here and um, you see here this um, v is multiplied by what this v which is in this magnitude is multiplied by a vy or multiplied by a vx so you get the v square term and here you add an event I, in my next video i'm going to talk about the events here you make sure that when the ball hits the ground you stop the integration okay because if you don't it can go for negative y's which don't exist and you say is terminal one which means stop the integration right when y2 and y2 if you look at it is the y of the projectile or the basketball when this y crosses zero whenever this y crosses zero 
it is going to terminate it and it should cross the zero in the negative one direction which means the y should be decreasing and hit the ground not increasing and of course in this case it will decrease and here is the simple animation so let's go ahead and run it and there we go you clearly see the curvature here and you clearly see that uh, it is going to fall at a distance of about 377 meters under the release place instead of right at x of zero and the motion of that is not as simple as this one that i showed here it's not like a simple parabola or something it is going to get a little bit more complicated here you have some turn because the direction of the v is reversed so omega is going to be inward instead of outward here so you're going to get some change in the curvature and then it keeps going like that and again this is what this is the animation let me run it one more time for you and here of course the ball is spinning as it's moving and this is what this is what you would see so hopefully now you have a better understanding of uh, what happens when you release that basketball spinning and it goes all the way to the lake instead of a perfect free fall what happens when you include the drag force and of course the lift force or the magnus force here and uh, i'm gonna uh, give you a download link for the MATLAB simulation so you can play with it and learn from it thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video